One of my favorite cards to make is definitely the shower card because I love happy occasions like this, whether it is a bridal shower or a baby shower, or actually a card like this you could use for almost any occasion. In this lesson, we are going to be die cutting this teacup and bouquet and inking it up and creating this layered card. So our first step is this die is the teacup, but I love this die because it has the banner, all the different flowers, the leaf and the teacup all on one die. So all we need to do is put pattern paper down and go to our machine here and create our die sandwich and roll it right through and all of the pieces will pop right out. Now, depending on what kind of card you want to make exactly with this, you may want to run several different pieces of pattern paper through, maybe even seven, several different patterns or styles. And that's what I have done here. As you can see, I've got lots of teacups and flowers and all kinds of great stuff all ready to go. So let's get coloring. The first thing we're gonna do, I like to put a little bit of distress ink, although any dye ink would really work nicely. So I'll start with the pink colors here. And I'm going to go for the flowers and just rub from the edges, around the edges. You can do, I suggest doing kind of a variety. So some of these I may do a little more some of them a little less. Here you can see a couple more already done with various colors of ink. Some of them you may want just as they are. You might really like just looking at it how it is plain. So definitely keep a variety. And then you're just going to repeat with the leaves and some green. Here's a couple that I've already, already got done. And then again with brown for the teacup. Now you don't have to do brown and pink and green. You could do any colors that you would like. It's really going to depend on your project. I love the aged soft look that I can get. This happens to be ground espresso, but any brown dye ink or distress ink would work. I just like the depth that it really gives. So it really just kind of helps the center, which stays light, really helps that pop. So once we have gotten to this point, we're ready to start assembling our card. Now I am gonna work on some pink cardstock. If you wanted more texture, you could try a textured cardstock, maybe a wood grain, or like in this example, you can see the dotted cardstock that I've got here. There, it's just a, an added layer of texture. Sometimes I like that, sometimes it's a little too much. So definitely what I would suggest is setting up your card, setting up the elements, and then deciding if what you see is something that you like or if it's a little much for you. So what I'll do is just place the various flowers around first and tuck in a few leaves. And I start with the larger ones, just like when I'm embellishing, I like to start with the larger pieces because maybe there's something that will work a little better or maybe there's something that needs a little something extra. We're not gluing anything down yet, so we don't need to worry about if everything is just right. We're just getting a feel for what we've got and if we like how it looks. And me, I think I want a little floral one there. And that's definitely another benefit to punching out or die cutting a few extras. If you've die cut a few extras, then you have a couple more pieces to play around with and see what you like. Once we are satisfied with this, we're gonna go ahead and get out our adhesive and go ahead and glue the pieces. What I tend to do is just kind of put my hand here and start reaching under. Because we're gonna be gluing so many different elements, other than this one at the very top, I find that I can just kind of, instead of moving absolutely everybody, just move a few pieces out of the way at a time so that I can get all of the pieces exactly where I want them and where I've envisioned them. If I moved everything out of the way, I might not quite remember how I had it and we might run into some problems. So just takes a, just takes a moment, get a few little adhesive on the back of all those pieces, starting from the back, and you can layer as many or as few pieces. Another option that you could have, if you wanted, you could put some foam adhesive under some of the pieces and not under others to make more dimension. But because I'm gonna be adding some buttons and things, I didn't really feel like I needed that extra layer on there. And then I'm gonna put some in the middle here and get my large flower and then my smaller flower in the middle there. 
All right, next step, I'm gonna scoot all of these extras out of our way just a little bit here, and I'm gonna work on inking the card itself. Now, I am going to go with some brown ink here and go around the edges. I waited until everything was down because I really wanted to be able to leave that pink area in the center a little brighter, a little lighter around my teacup. And I really wasn't gonna be able to do that until I had all of those pieces in place. I'm just gonna go around, all the way around, just nice and easy, starting off the edge of the paper and working onto it. And again, this is the espresso color, so it's the same color as I used on the teacup itself. And once all the way around and happy with the look of it, we're going to move on to paint and also to mist. So first up with paint, this is the new Prima paint and this is Vintage Rose. It's so, so pretty, such a perfect pink for so many different things. I'm gonna take a paintbrush, a dry, I'm gonna start with a dry paintbrush because I think that that should work out for what I want to do. And I'm gonna load it up with some paint and then just flick. And I'm not adding water because I really do want larger chunks, if you will, more texture to the paint droplets that I get down. And I want them to be big and splotchy. I don't need a lot. Now, if I want it, I could also add a bit of paint around the edge. You can see here on this example where I have done just that. On this one though, it's a little darker cardstock and I don't feel like I need that contrast like I did on the original. So if you wanted to, you could just add that, otherwise you don't need to. I do feel like I want some gold mist though. So I'm gonna give it a good shake and then take the top off and kind of just repeat that process of splattering on. And if I want, I can shake it a little more this is a fun fact about this gold mist. If you only shake it a little bit and then do that, you'll only get a little bit of gold. It'll be a little more sheer. If you shake it all the way up until it's fully mixed, you're gonna get more gold. So you can actually kind of vary the, the look of the gold so that there is just a little more variety to your splatter, which I think is a lot of fun. All right, now with this all in place, we can look at if we want any additional leaves or flowers or things, we could add that. I don't feel like we need any of that, so I'm gonna move on to our banner, our, our little banner here, and I am going to place it off to the side. I'm just gonna, just kinda taking a look at where I want it. And I did the misting and splattering before, so that when we put our words down and our buttons down, those don't get splattered onto. And I'm going to be working with some little clear stamps here. I've got the word love stamped out and I'm just gonna take a look here and see if I like where the letters are and how it's lining up on my project. And if I do, I'm just again with the Espresso Distress Ink and ink up my stamps and just stamp down. Now if it does not, now on this, I'm really gonna kind of rock it back and forth since there's a couple layers of paper. Just a tip, if one of them doesn't work out, take that one stamp, ink it up, and do it off the block. Just manually with your finger, press it on there. When you're working with a lot of layers of paper, sometimes that, it needs that extra boost of help. All right, now our car just needs a little bit of dimension. So I have here the Attic Findings kit, and a little bit of glossy accents. And I'm going to tuck a few little things in here. And I'm gonna tuck one there and I think one under here and then perhaps a few little sequins. It'll make this card a little different than the original. I'm gonna use the white sequins here to add a little bit here and there. And then I'll pick out a nice nice button here for the center. And I think I want something else right there. I'm thinking a little bit of us, maybe a little smaller. We could go with kind of an aqua button, but it might be, a, it might intrude on my sentiment there. So if I wanna do something like that where I want it to peek out, I can just do, tuck it underneath the teacup, tuck it underneath of any of the parts really. Because I didn't glue everything down really solid, I'll be able to do that. And what I would do for this teacup edge, I'd wait till everything would dry and then I can add a little bit of adhesive 
right here at the corner to pin that down if I think that's going to be a problem. I do still want one more little element right there. So in going through, I think I'm gonna stick with cream. I just need to find myself a smaller cream button and I think that's just the perfect one. Perfect. All right, there we go. We've got our card all ready to go and give and we can switch this sentiment out depending on the occasion. And just like we can switch the colors out to make this anything from this shabby rose color to bright fun colors.